The Sun Reporter was the paper in, initially, and then the Bayview, when the Bayview came on and became a uh, grassroots paper, then it became the paper. I thought it was good to have a paper, you know, that was relevant to black people and what was going on. It was black. It was pro-black. It was revolutionary. It was militant. It was uplifting. It was, it was, it was all those things. There's a lot of publications out there and uh, I was familiar with the burning spear of the Uhuru House. But if you think of how many publications that there are out there from black organizations, you know, if you find one that really does it for you, then stick with it, you know, be happy about it. So I think the, the Bayview attracted me when I realized that this was a type of paper that was not only consistent, but was definitely uh, committed to having like a cultural rep uh, representation of, uh, of um, you know, our generation. With Dead Prez, you know, Oakland and the Bay Area has been become like a second home for us. It's like our West Coast Brooklyn. That was in huge, large part because of the Bay View and just always uh, offering the Bay View to us as a platform that could help us reach more people. You know what I mean? And just uh, keep us uh, in the context of what was relevant and going on in the progressive side of the Bay. Black Panther newspaper, uh, you know, truth to power. They wasn't scared to open their mouth. Not only that, they walked around with a gun. <laughs> that scared the hell out of white folks when they see black folks with guns. So that, that's why we get the comparison. The Bayview newspaper, uh, persistently has been a uh, you know thorn in the side of city government and uh, federal government uh, interests uh, and media. I think that the black press has played a really important role in the lives of black Americans for at least 200 years. One of the things that I really value about the Bayview newspaper is their willingness to publish a variety of voices that you're not going to find in alternative press and you're certainly not going to find in mainstream press. A lot of the information and a lot of the news was, was really concentrated into like the community and the district because there was, was so much going on during that time. It's more international, which I think speaks to um, the issues that uh, Hunters Point and Bayview have, how those issues are connected to you know a lot of other communities that are similar. One thing I say about the Radcliffe is that, you know, they said that they're going to do what they're going to do. And I can't knock them. And anybody that had came in before they came in, they wasn't going to do what they said they were doing. Something I saw in Mary, she was going to do what she said she was going to do. Because I had been around business people and I know what they said. When somebody comes out, they say they want to do it, and they come to you, that's the one you want to work with. And that's the way it went down. And there, there, there's no, um, I don't regret it. I regret that I had to get out of it, but, but that's the way it goes. You win some and lose some, and you gotta move on. I'm Naomi Jokes. I work for the Community Programs and Partnership Division here at San Francisco Public Library. I help to coordinate, I'm the Adult Engagement Coordinator, and what that entails is I help to organize all of the adult programs here at the Maine and system-wide at all 28 branches. And we're also very pleased to partner, once again partner with the San Francisco Bayview Newspaper in hosting uh, San Francisco Bayview Newspaper 40th anniversary event here at the library that will be held on a Sunday. And it will highlight the successes of the past 40 years, the struggles of the paper has been involved in, and various special guests will be in attendance. So that'll be a not to miss event for, for the month of February.